Good day, everybody. This is Chris back again at the Ancient Scholar, and today what I want to talk about is uh, I'm going to talk about uh, CYP450 or Cytochrome P450 enzymes. I know I kind of said I I was done with the the playlist on the whole toxicokinetics and metabolism slash biotransformation, but I figured what I what I want to do or what I want to do today is I want to dive into just a little more detail as to exactly how uh, the the CYP450 enzymes work, and and the biggest picture, the big the big picture concept of of how these enzymes work goes something kind of like this. If you can imagine that, I have some sort of molecule here. Okay, it doesn't really matter exactly what it is, but here is my my parent compound, um, and I will be symbolizing that with our H today. So when you see RH on the drawings, you just want to um, you want to look at that as being um, the substrate or the the original um, molecule that we're dealing with. And following the chemical reaction that is uh, that is um, enhanced by the enzyme, you might have something like this. All right. Where I now have a hydroxyl group that has been unmasked and or attached to the uh, this molecule. And RH, uh, and what today, what I will call that um, the product, is going to be an oxidized product, so it's going to be ROH. All right, so that's the end product. is is just some generic generic molecule that has been in this case oxidized. I've added added or I've un unmasked a hydroxyl group, and of course that is one of the major things that we see happen in phase one. Uh, biotransformation reactions. So that's a that's the big picture of what's going on. It doesn't necessarily have to be hydroxyl group, but it it is typically um, ox oxidation that occurs with this with these mo with these parent molecules. And I'm going to show you kind of how that works. So what we're going to do is let's just put a couple of things up here. So RH is going to be my original substrate. Right. ROH is going to be the product. That's right. going to be the metabolite that's produced. All right. And then whenever you see the FE, okay, that is talking about the iron. Okay, that is talking about the iron in the CYP450 enzyme. Um, the iron can have two different oxidation states. It can have a, what's known as its a ferric state. The ferric state, which is a uh, plus three oxidation state, it's tri trivalent. Um, and then we can have the ferrous state, which is the plus two oxidation state or uh, bivalent or divalent, and the difference between ferrous and uh, ferric and ferrous, excuse me, is that the ferrous state is oxidized iron, whereas ferric is reduced, or excuse me, uh, ferric is uh, the oxidized state, and ferrous is the reduced state because the charge has been reduced, so this state has an additional electron that this state doesn't. And electron transfer is going to be a very important part of how all of this works. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my generic CYP, cytochrome P450 enzyme. And that enzyme in, 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 its, in its starting or resting state, okay, it is going to be in its... 3 plus, the iron within that enzyme, is going to be in its ferric state. So I have my uh, CYP450 enzyme here, and then I have 
the drug over here. All right. So as we kick this whole cycle off, all right, the drug will coordinate with that enzyme. All right. So then once that happens, I'm going to have a, a combination. I'm going to have the enzyme in its uh, plus three or its, its plus three oxidation state. I'm going to have the enzyme and then I'm going to have my substrate. All right. So the first thing that's going to happen to this, this complex here, this enzyme substrate complex, is I am going to um, have a reduction. Okay. I'm going to have a, a reduction uh, process that occurs. So we can say, maybe I can break this up into um, different parts. So we can say that the first step is the, the combining of the enzyme and the uh, substance, whatever that may be. Okay, that would be my step one. And then the next step of this cycle is going to be uh, adding an electron to this. Okay, so I'm going to have an uh, I'm going to have a reduction. Reduction is going to be occurring here. Um, I'm going to be reducing this this thing here, this complex here, and that reduction is going to be uh, due to NADPH, NADPH, and we've talked about this molecule earlier. All right, so NADPH is going to come by. NADPH is going to be oxidized to NAD+, which means that there is an electron, okay, because here's, here's positive, um, an electron has been transferred, okay, has been transferred to this complex, and the oxidation state of the enzyme will now change to the Fe. 2 plus state, all right? Uh, went from 3 down to 2 because an electron, okay, has been transferred to it, and then I'm going to have my substrate here, all right? So step 2 is going to involve the, um, is going to be involve the reduction of this complex and the oxidation of NADPH, all right? And that's not the, that that's only the first first time that that happens, that'll actually happen again. All right, so now what's going to happen is I'm going to move down to uh, my third step. And the third step is going to involve um, an oxygen molecule coordinating with this complex here. So I have my Fe2 plus um, and the RH, and then O2, an oxygen molecule is going to come in. It's going to coordinate with that, all right, and it is going to produce, all right, it is going to produce down here, um, Fe3 plus, okay, Fe3 plus O2 minus RH, okay, so, um, let me put a uh, three there, right here, and then let's just talk about what happened here. Okay, so what happened is oxygen came in, all right. Oxygen is now coordinating here, an oxygen molecule, but the electron, okay, the electron that was um, here in the iron, that electron has been transferred over to the oxygen, so the iron has been oxidized, okay, it has lost an electron, and the oxygen has been reduced, and that electron is right there on that oxygen, okay, so I've had an electron shuffle occurring there um, by adding that oxygen into the mix. Then what's going to happen is, as we move down the cycle, okay, so then what's going to happen is I am going to add another electron to the mix. Um, and that is going to involve NADPH again. NADPH 
is going to deposit another electron. It's going to be NAD plus. All right. The electron has been added to this, this complex here. All right. So I have my second. Okay, this is the, the second um, re, a reduction occurring. My first reduction was here. This is a second reduction that's occurring. Okay, I've reduced this again. And what is that going to produce? Well, that is going to produce F E 2 plus. Okay, so as you may have guessed, because of the electronegativity of oxygen, this is going to be O2, okay, O2 minus 2, okay. So it was a minus 1 here. I'll just put a 1 there. Minus 1 charge. Now it is a minus 2 charge because I've added another electron. So here, the oxygen got the electron from, from the iron, okay. Um, but here, the oxygen is getting that electron from the NAD. So now I have two electrons there. And that is the fourth step. All right. This step here, the fourth step, is generally considered the rate limiting step of this reaction. All right. So that may or may not be something noteworthy if, if you end up having a test on, on this uh, stuff that's occurring. Okay. So now what's going to happen? Well, now we're going to have some interesting things occurring, and I'm going to draw this up and kind of make this cyclic um, because it just repeats over and over and over again. Okay, so now what's going to happen is I am going to add a couple of protons to this complex here, and I should draw the RH because the, uh, the drug is, is still there as well. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two protons, which are just hydrogen ions, so 2H+, plus. those are two protons, okay? Two protons are going to come by like that, and they will ultimately be turned into a water molecule. So what, what has happened here? So these hydrogens have went uh, kind of swooped on by here, interacted with this, this complex here, and now I have H2O. So I, I started out with two hydrogens here, okay, protons, um, and then I ended up with a water molecule. So what happened here was that um, I ended up taking two electrons, okay, a negative two, okay, because these hydrogens wanted to pick up uh, uh, some electrons. So they picked up these two electrons that are hanging out here, and then they picked up one of these oxygens here. So at this step here, what I'm doing, why, why this is occurring, okay, and maybe I'll draw this in a completely different color, the, the reason that this is occurring here, okay, is that, you know, here I have an oxygen bond, okay, I have a covalently bound oxygen uh, molecule, and it's, of course, bound to the, the iron as well. Um, I need to break this bond. And the, the way that I break that bond is by making a water molecule. So one of these oxygens goes toward making that water molecule. Um, two of the electrons, okay, so I have, you know, my electrons here. Two electrons also go and combine with the protons here to create a, a, a molecule of water. And this is step five right here. Okay, so this is this could, you can be thought of as the oxygen cleavage occurring, um, breaking the bonds between the oxygen. Um, so what's left over of this original complex here? Okay, well let's go ahead and just draw what's left over. Okay, so at you know I, at the end of this little reaction here, um, I have iron. Okay, bound to oxygen. All right. And that whole thing is in a three plus state, and then I have the um, the um, uh, the substrate, the the drug there. So I've had all this happening, and all this stuff here is setting the stage. Okay, it's setting the stage um, for the the next couple of steps. Okay, so nothing has really happened to the substrate.
okay? Nothing has really happened to this. All this done is this is set up. Um, this has uh, thermodynamically and kinetically um, made, you know, these all these steps, this electron shuffling occurring here, this oxidation reduction that's occurring, has thermodynamically and kinetically set us up for the next two things that are that are going to happen. So what's going to happen in step six is that this oxygen here, okay, this oxygen is going to be ultimately transferred. This oxygen can now be transferred to the substrate. I have a situation where it's thermodynamically and it, 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 kinetically favorable for this chemical reaction to occur. It's, it's much more favorable, it's much easier um, for that chemical reaction to occur. So I am going to have, okay, Fe3+, plus, and then ROH. So this oxygen here has been transferred over to the substrate, all right? So step six is where I actually have the oxygen the oxygen can now be transferred over here. It's, it's thermodynamically, thermodynamically and kinetically favorable for that to occur. And then once that transfer occurs, the enzyme is now able to release, okay, it is able to release the metabolite, the product, okay, and once this gets released, I'm just left with my original CYP450 enzyme in its um, in its default ferric state, and then this whole cycle can happen all over again. Okay, the drug comes in, it's oxidized. Drug comes out. Drug comes in, it's oxidized. It com it's coming out, and at the same time, I'm making water molecules here. The protons are um, being turned into water here. I have reduction. Um, I have the reduction of the enzyme um, occurring here, I have reduction occurring here, and I have oxidation um, of NADPH occurring at two different points as it gives up an electron to this. So it should come as no surprise that uh, this whole process is highly dependent upon oxidative phosphorylation. And uh, the hexose monophosphate shunt or the pentose phosphate pathway, because I need to feed oxygen and I need to feed NADPH into this in, into this this process um, f in order for this this these these CYP450 enzymes to function properly. Okay, guys, uh, it was a little bit of biochemistry there, but I really I hope you enjoyed this, and I, I hope you have a little better understanding for how these these phase one reactions, specifically the cytochrome P450 um, enzymes are, are working. As always, thanks for hanging in there.